write the output of the program given below. So you are provided with a program. Write the output of this program. Step 1. Memory should be allocated for the global variables. Global variable means above the main function and outside all functions if there is a variable, it's a global variable. This program does not contain a global variable because above the main function, it is a class by the name game. So this much is a class. Which means above the main function and outside all functions, there are no variables. So program does not contain a global variable. Second point, execution of a program starts at the main function and it ends here. So finally the control comes here. Now after this automatically control goes to next line. Game is a class. A and B are objects of the class. In a program if an object is encountered, two things are there to be done. One, memory should be allocated for the object. After that, the corresponding constructor should be called. So first let me allocate memory for A. Memory is allocated as follows. Name of the memory location, the content of the memory location and some address. This content area is divided into three parts because this class consists of three data members, level, score and type. Name of the first part is a dot name of data member 1. Similarly, name of the second part is name of the object dot data member 2. And name of the third part is name of the object dot data member 3. So a dot type. So like this memory is allocated for object A. After that the corresponding constructor should be called. This is the constructor. A member function with the same name as that of a class is known as constructor. So from here, automatically control comes here. This argument is passed to parameter G type. Suppose if this argument was not given, then the default value comes in parameter G type. Here, argument is not there. So in this case, this default value comes in parameter G type. Here, an argument is given, so G comes in parameter G type. Let me allocate memory for G type. Memory is allocated like this, name, content, some address. And this argument G comes in parameter G type. So here it contains G. You can see. The argument G comes in parameter G type. So from here, finally the control came here. Let me go inside the constructor. Level, score and type are data members. Inside a constructor, programmer should write only name of the data member Compiler automatically takes this as the name of the object for which the constructor was called dot level dot score dot type. So here the constructor was called for the object A. So this is taken as A dot level is equal to 1. This becomes 1. A dot score is equal to 0. This becomes 0. And A dot type is equal to G type. Your G type is G, so this becomes G. You can see the values 1, 0 and G. After executing a constructor, control goes back to the point 
from where the function was called or constructor was called. So control comes back here. Now here nothing more to be done. When the control comes back here, the parameter name GS does not exist. So that is deallocated. Now B is another object of a class. When an object is encountered, two things are there to be done. One, memory should be allocated. Two, the corresponding constructor should be called. So first let me allocate memory for B. Memory is allocated as follows. Name, content and some address. This content area is divided into three parts because this class consists of three data members, level, score and type. First one, it is B dot data member one. Second part is B dot data member two. So B dot score. And the third one is B dot data member 3. So it is B dot type. So here memory is allocated for B. This is done. Now the corresponding constructor should be called. This is the constructor. A member function with the same name as that of a class is known as constructor. So from here automatically the control will come here. Here an argument is not given, so this default value comes in the parameter G type. Let me allocate memory for G type. So this is how memory is allocated for G type. An argument is not given, so this default value P comes in G type. P comes. So from here, finally control came here. No arguments are there. So the default value comes in G type. Let me go inside the constructor. Level, score and type are data members. Inside a constructor, programmer will write only name of the data member. Compiler automatically takes this as name of the object for which the constructor was called dot level dot score dot type so here constructor was called for the object b so this is b dot level b dot score b dot type so b dot level is equal to 1 this becomes 1 b dot score is equal to 0 here 0 b dot type is equal to g type here p so 1 0 p comes constructor is executed after executing a constructor control goes back to the point from where it was called so it comes back here when the control comes back here parameter name g type does not exist so this does not exist this line is completely executed so constructor called after executing this line automatically it goes to the next line now this symbol is the function on encountering a function called finally control reaches the point where the function is defined <coughs> So from here, finally the control comes here. Inside the function, type, level and score are data members. Inside a member function, programmer will write only name of the data member. Compiler automatically takes this as the name of the object with which the member function was called dot type dot level dot score so this is taken as b dot type b dot level b dot score because function was called using the object name b so b dot type it is p so here you get p 
followed by at the rate B dot level 1. Endel means cursor will go to next line and B dot score 0. You can see. Endel means cursor will go to next line. So your first line of answer is P at the rate 1, end L, 0, end L. So in the computer's monitor you can see P at the rate 1, end L, again 0, end L. Next line. After executing a function, control goes to the point from where the function was called. So control comes back here. After this, automatically the next statement is executed. This symbol is the, it's a function. On encountering a function called, finally control reaches the point where the function is defined. This is declaration of the function. This is definition of the function. So from here, finally the control comes here. This argument is passed to parameter GS. I repeat, from here, control comes here. Argument 11 is passed to parameter GS. So GS contains 11. Inside the function, score plus equal to GS. Plus equal to is a short form. How can you expand? A plus equal to B means A is equal to A plus B. So, score plus equal to GS means score is equal to score plus GS. Score is a data member. Inside a member function, programmer will write only name of the data member. Compiler automatically takes it as name of the object with which the member function was called dot score dot score so this is a dot score is equal to a dot score plus gs so what is a dot score zero what is gs 11 so zero plus 11 your a dot score becomes 11 this becomes 11 Yes, it became 11. Now, after this, control goes to next line. If score greater than or equal to 30, score is a data member. So, it is a dot score because function was called using the object a. Now, what is a dot score? It is 11. So, 11 greater than or equal to 30, wrong. Else. 11 greater than or equal to 20, wrong else. So, level is equal to 1. Level is a data member. So, a dot level equal to 1 because function was called using the object name a. What is a dot level? 1. So, this becomes 1. No change because even otherwise it is 11. After executing a function, control goes to the point from where the function was called. When the control comes back here, Parameter name GS does not exist. So this parameter does not exist. After this, next statement executed. This symbol is there. It's a function. On encountering a function called, finally control reaches the point where the function is defined. So finally it comes here because this is declaration of the function and this is definition of the function. So from here, finally it comes here. Equal to sign is the assignment operator. So right hand side will be assigned to left hand side. Question mark colon is the conditional operator. If this condition is correct, Statement given after question mark will be executed and if this condition is wrong, statement given after colon will be executed. So what about this condition? Type is a data member. So it must be taken as a dot type because function was called using the object name a. And what is a dot type? You can see it is g. 
So G equal to equal to P condition wrong. So statement given after colon will be executed. That is this P will be assigned to type. So type contains P. Type is a data member. It must be taken as A dot type because function was called using the object name A. So your A dot type contains P. So this one contains P. Yes, it contains P. After executing a function, control goes to the point from where the function was called. So control comes back here. Now next line. This symbol is the so function. On encountering a function called finally control reaches the point where the function is defined. So from here it comes here. Remember this is declaration and this is definition. So from here it comes here. Argument 25 is passed into parameter GS. So your GS contains 25. Yes, GS contains 25. Now control goes inside the function. Plus equal to is a short form. Expanded like this. Score is a data member. So it must be taken as B dot score equals B dot score plus GS. Because function was called using the object name B. What is B dot score? Zero. What is GS? 25. So, 0 plus 25, your B dot score becomes 25. This becomes 25. It became 25. Now, next line. Score is a data member. So, B dot score. Now, B dot score is 25. So, 25 greater than or equal to 30. Wrong. So, else part. 25 greater than or equal to 20. Yes, it is correct. So, level is equal to 2. Level is a data member. So, it must be taken as B dot level. Because this function was called using the object name B. So, B dot level is equal to 2. So, this becomes 2. You can see it became 2. After executing a function, control goes to the point from where the function was called. So, from here, control comes back here. When the control comes back here, parameter name GS does not exist. So, this parameter name does not exist. Now, after executing this, automatically the next one is executed. When you see this symbol, understand that it is a function. On encountering a function called, finally control reaches the point where the function is defined. So, from here, finally the control comes here. Now, inside the function, type, level and score are data members. Inside a member function, Programmer will write only name of the data member. Compiler automatically takes this as the name of the object with which the member function was called. Here it was called using A. So this is A dot type, A dot level, A dot score. So you get the second answer. What is A dot type? You can see that it is P. Followed by at the rate a dot level, you can see it is 1. Endel means next line. A dot score, you can see that it is 11. So your next line of answer is p at the rate 1, end l, 11, end l. You can see the answer here. p at the rate 1, end l. 11 and end L. Now, after executing a function, control goes to the point from where it was called. So, control comes back here. 
Now the next statement is executed. When you see this symbol, understand that it is a function. On encountering a function called, finally control reaches a point where the function is defined. So it comes here. Type, level and score are data members. Inside a member function, programmer will write only name of the data member. Compiler automatically takes this as the name of the object with which the member function was called. Here it is B. So B dot type, B dot level, B dot score. What is B dot type? It is P. Followed by at the rate. What is B dot level? It is 2. NL means next line. And what is B dot score? 25. So your next answer is P at the rate 2 NL 25 and L. You can see the answer here. P at the rate 2 and L 25 followed by and L. Now after executing this, control goes to next line. When the control comes here, compiler understands that the program is about to terminate. So automatically the destructor is called. And destructors are called in the reverse order of invocation of constructors. First constructor for A was called, followed by constructor for B. So destructors will be called in the reverse order. That is, destructor for B is called first, followed by destructor for A. So here, destructor for B called. Programmer did not write the code for a destructor. So compiler will automatically write the code for a destructor. And here, destructor for B called. So B is deallocated. Again, the control comes here. One more destructor is there to be called. So destructor for A called. Programmer did not write the code for a destructor. So compiler will automatically write the code and destructor for A called. This is deallocated. So this one goes. Again the control comes back here. No more destructors are there to be called. So finally the program terminates. And when the program terminates, control goes back to the operating system. So for this given program, the final answer is this. This is the output of the given program.